Hi everyone, today is a very special episode because it's story time. I am going to be reading to you the story of Bunny's big adventure. Now, everyone is going to be there. So get your family comfortable. Make sure mom has a cup of tea or cup of coffee ready. Make sure you are cuddled up next to the fire. Make sure Nana and Grandpa are comfortable in their chair. And let's begin. Enjoy. It was a beautiful morning in Bunny's garden. It had rained the night before and everything had little droplets of water glistening in the warm sunlight. Bunny was already awake, thanks in part to Wham Wham, her dear bird bestie, wrapping a new version of the Christmas Carol Silent Night. Wham Wham was not the best singing bird in the garden, but boy did he try. Waku, on the other hand, was indeed the neighborhood singing sensation a birdie with the most beautiful singing voice. Daisy and Lily, the sisters, were already up as well and were running around the garden fighting over their toys as siblings sometimes do. Fortunately, they loved each other more than their disagreement over yellow furry bear. On this particular morning, however, Daisy noticed that Bunny was a little sad. Something's wrong with Bunny. Daisy whispered to her sister, Lily peeped through the fence and indeed Bunny's head was drooped and she seemed sad. What did you do now? Me? If Bunny's upset, I'm pretty sure it's because of you. Me? I'm an angel. Bunny loves me. You chased around the garden, barking and snapping at her. I was trying to hug her. You were trying to eat her. Oh, we could do this all day. Quiet, girls, yelled Mama from the kitchen as their barking was unsettling the entire neighborhood. Lily sat back. Well, I'm a dog. I'm always hungry. That's true, sis. I'm hungry now, whispered Daisy. And just like that, they were best of friends again, giggling like schoolgirls on the playground. Lily peeped through the fence again. I have come to like Bunny, though. If I'm honest, she's really cute. Bunny had noticed Daisy and Lily's row and moved across the garden to her lookout spot. There she stared out at the sky and distant trees. Something was bothering her and she seemed deep in thought. Wham Wham the bird arrived and landing poorly stumbled towards the swimming pool. Tweet! He spluttered followed by another. Tweet! As he skidded to a stop just short of falling in. Sweet. Bunny smiled at Wham Wham, understanding exactly what the clumsy little cute bird was saying. Wham Wham was asking why Bunny seemed so sad when it was such a pleasant sunny day. It had been some time since the lightning incident and Wham Wham had already been struck three times before. So a sunny day was safe and perfect. Bunny sighed and looked at Wham Wham. Do you know your mama? Not your human mama, but your mama mama. Wham Wham nodded enthusiastically and pointed his wing proudly towards the wall at the neighborhood cat named Felix. Tweet! Uh, are you sure, Wham Wham? Asked Bunny. Tweet! Squealed Wham Wham just as the car backfired on the road, sending the poor bird flying off into a thick bush. Yeah. Bunny was sure Wham Wham did not intend to hit the bush and so pretended she did not notice. All I know is she lived near a red silo with a yellow stripe, but that could be anywhere, mumbled Bunny to herself. An old hardy doll was searching for some earthworms in the soil nearby and leaned over. He had a husky voice, but it was still quite loud. I know where the red silo with the yellow stripe is, rabbit. What? Where? Well, let me see. Do you know the post box at the end of the street? 
No. What about the field behind the post box? Nope. Beyond the field, through the small game farm and across the narrow stream. Does any of this sound familiar to you? Uh... But you're a rabbit! How do you not know your countryside? Argued the loud bird. I've always lived in this garden, whispered Bunny. Okay, I've lost interest in this conversation. And with that, he flew off. Bunny mumbled repeatedly to herself to memorize the clues he gave her. Postbox at the end of the street, field behind the postbox, came from behind the field, across the narrow river to the red silo with the yellow strap. You're missing your bunny, Mama, asked Felix the cat in a calm, somewhat intimidating tone. Bunny, happy Felix wasn't chasing her, answered, I am. Do you remember her? Bunny looked up as she tried to remember her very first birthday. Now, as little bunny eyes only open after two weeks, she tried to remember the day her eyes opened. She was on a farm and she did remember her mama. She had fair light fur and was a beautiful bunny. A farmer put bunny and all her siblings in a cardboard box and loaded them on the back of his metal machine. Bunny's mama ran onto the dirt road as the metal machine drove away and Bunny watched her get smaller and smaller. What Bunny also noticed was a giant red silo with a yellow stripe on the farm. The farmer was taking Bunny with all her brothers to a market to sell as pets. Along the way the truck hit a bump, the back flew open and the box of bunnies bounced out off the road onto the grass. Bunny and her siblings, dazed by the experience, climbed out of the box and looked around. They had no idea where they were, and the farm was long gone. They scrambled across the lawn and found cover in a nearby home. They hid in a beautiful courtyard, adorned by bogan villas. It was here they met human mama, and it was here, a short time later, that Bunny lost all all her siblings in an attack. She was the only one who survived and it was then that human mama adopted her. I'm sorry about that stray cat attack, whispered Felix. It's natural, I suppose, for cats to hunt. It's not personal. Bunny stared back. It was personal to me. I suppose it was. Again, I am so sorry, Bonnie. Bunny smiled and nodded in appreciation. Wham Wham emerged out of the tree and flying up to Bunny, he yelled with an urgent Tweet! Pointing his wing at Felix. Tweet! Again, pointing back and forth at Felix. Yes, I know there's a cat nearby, Wham Wham. He's standing right there. Indeed, Felix was no more than a foot away. Everything is okay. Wham Wham slowly looked over at Felix as an uncomfortable silence fell on the three. I think he's been hit by lightning one too many times, if you ask me. Just those two occasions. Strained Bunny as Felix left. It was at this point Wham Wham appeared to have fallen asleep. Bunny didn't know if birds did sleep, but Wham Wham was indeed completely unconscious. Bunny leaned in and whispered to her sleeping friend. Don't tell anyone, Wham Wham, but I'm leaving the garden to find my mama. And with that, Bunny left. Some minutes passed and Wham Wham, by now, was tilted back on his one leg about to fall over when he suddenly awoke. His eyes widened. He looked around in a panic and let out an urgent call. Nearby, Waku was startled and looked up at the sky. What? I don't hear thunder. Jifflejam, his cousin, flew up a meter or so and saw Wham Wham. He called out. It's fine. He wasn't struck by lightning. Wondering what the emergency was, they flew across the garden to Wham Wham, who by now was clutching his heart with his wing as he huffed and puffed, struggling for air. Waku strained his eyes humorously and bellowed. 
Birds don't hyperventilate, you dilly bird. Wham Wham stopped and realized he was fine. Tweet. Bunny? What's wrong with Bunny? Asked a nervous Waku. Tweet. Muttered Wham Wham. Bunny has left the garden to find her mama? When did she tell you this? Tweet. A while back while you were asleep? Tweet. Assured Wham Wham. Waku looked around the garden, then up at the birds that had flown in to see what all the commotion was about. Waku addressed them. Attention all who fly. Has anyone seen Bunny? She is missing. Who? <gasps> Yelled Bert the Hadida. Everyone jumped as Hadidas are really loud. Bunny! She's about this high. Waku hovered just off the ground and gestured Bunny's height with his wing. She's grey with big eyes, two wonderful ears and a fluffy tail. Tweet! yelled Wham Wham. Oh goodness. Yes, and she's a bunny. The birds all looked at each other confused and shook their heads. None of them had seen her. You could do that thing you do, you know. Fly and search for her from an aerial viewpoint. I mean, you know, be birds, said Felix in a sarcastic yet menacing voice. Waku stared at the cat he feared with wide eyes and trying his best to look calm announced. The savage hunter from next door is right. We will take to the sky. Waku pointed bravely and yelled, Let's fly! With that, all the birds in the garden took to flight and flew off in different directions to find Bunny, all except Wham Wham, who was staring at Felix the cat, and he had missed the launch. He looked around, then back at the scary cat, whispering nervously. Tweet? Yes, all your friends are gone. Tweet? Yes, you are all alone with me. Tweet? No, I won't eat you today, Wham Wham. We have to find Bunny, but tomorrow is another day. <laughs> Assured the naughty cat, and with that, Wham Wham fainted, flat on the floor. Felix looked at him smiling and pushed the leaf over to put some shade on the little bird he had come to like. He turned and walked away as he muttered to himself, I do hope they find that little bunny. She's my only friend. Far ahead, hopping down the long street of the neighborhood, was Bunny. She had started her adventure and she wasn't going to stop. She would never give up until she found her mama and hugged her with all the love she had to give. Bunny was determined and hopping at full speed. The neighborhood was zooming by and she had a couple of close calls with the metal machines zipping left and right of her, hooting as they whizzed by. Bunny skidded to a stop and stared in wonder because in front of her across the busy road was the post box. This was the first clue to finding the red silo with the yellow stripe that the hardy dar had told her about. Bunny looked at the busy traffic and pondered how she would get across. She saw humans crossing at a metal Christmas tree. Well, traffic light. She thought a moment and looked around and saw a mother pushing a pram to the metal Christmas tree. Bunny scampered across the pavement and quietly climbed into the lower carriage of the pram while the mom was talking into a plastic box. The light changed and the mom walked across, oblivious to Bunny because of her phone call. They got to the other side and Bunny jumped out, starting some pedestrians. Their shock turned to smiles filled with delight when they saw it was a bunny and not a furry rat or a crazy squirrel. Bunny ran quickly and stood with her back pressed up against the post box. In front of her, just as Gertrude the Hadida had said, was a large field. The second clue. Bunny stared with excitement as she was well on her way to finding her mama. Her moment came and she scampered across the grass patch through a hole in the fence 
and into the field, disappearing in the long grass. Just moments later, Waku flew past the post box, accompanied by several other birds. Do you see her? He called out. I still don't know who we're looking for, yelled Fred the pigeon. A bunny! A bunny! yelled Waku. What's a bunny? replied Fred. Waku looked back, staring with a stunned, confused look. They flew over the post box back towards the house, having just missed Bunny. Arriving back home once again, there was a commotion in the garden. Wham Wham had gotten lost and was missing, while Daisy and Lily were trying to break out with the help of Grucho the Hardida. Grucho was pulling the latch from above with his beak while the two doggy sisters pressed against the gate. Arrgh! cried Grucho as he lost his footing and fell down on top of Daisy. He quickly recovered and was flustered and grumpy. I told you I wasn't a locksmith, but no, you insisted I try. Oh my goodness, my life flashed before my eyes. The dogs were straining their eyes and ears because... As we've mentioned, hardy dogs are very loud. Waku landed on the gate and pressed the latch down. The gate swung open. It's quite simple. You were pulling instead of pushing, he said. Grucho stared wide-eyed and shocked as Daisy and Lily ran out. Wait, called Waku. Are you going to find Bunny? Yes, Wa. What do you know? asked Lily. Waku explained. Bunny received information on where her bunny mama is. That's where we think she's going. Just then, Wham Wham flew past above the house, still lost, looking dazed and confused. Treat! He yelled and disappeared past the trees. Waku strained. Oh my word, he's lost again. Waku flew off to save him. I'll be right back. Grucho stared a moment then casually informed Daisy and Lily. I gave Bunny the information. She was looking for a red silo with a yellow stripe on a farm. Daisy lifted her paw asking. If you know where it is, then tell us. Tell us now, Grucho. Grucho squinted and shouted out. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. You don't have to yell. The dog stared with a humorous look at the large, loud bird. Up in the sky, Waku flew up next to Wham Wham. Wham Wham, you missed the house again. Wham Wham looked over and quipped. Tweet. Waku strained his eyes and yelled. What do you mean can I help you? It's me, you imbecile. Waku. Tweet. Shouted the cute, dazed little bird. No, they didn't move the house again. Oh my word. Just follow me. They both flew down back to the house where a small group had assembled in the garden. There was Daisy and Lily, Grucho the hardy dog, and Felix the cat. Waku landed next to the group. Wham Wham landed in the pool. Moments later after a chaotic rescue attempt, they were all present and Waku addressed them. I believe we all have the same agenda here, to find Bunny and bring her home safely. You all know it's a scary world out there, especially for a bunny. Now we will ask volunteers to go on this bunny finding mission. Are there any here? Everyone looked at each other and all raised their paws, wings and claws. Right then, we need to get going. It will be night soon and even more dangerous for our friend. Tweet, assured Wham Wham and saluted Waku with his wing. Tweet! Oh my goodness! mumbled Felix. Waku rolled his eyes. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Wham Wham. And saluted back to move things along. Daisy barked out. Well, I guess we're going on an adventure! Night had fallen and the world of our friends had gone dark. Fortunately, Felix the cat was in his element as this was his favourite time to explore. He arrived at the post box with Daisy and Lily, as well as the birds. Waku stretched out his wing, pointing. That's the post box you mentioned, Grucho, correct? Grucho stared a moment and answered. Correct? I feel like I'm back in the army. 
army? Asked Lily as everyone stared on confused. Yes, yes, the army. When my kind, that's Hardy Dawes, did battle with the treacherous Black Sparrow Hawks. Goodness me, enthused Daisy. Who won? Well, they did, of course. Our initial defense was to deafen them with our war cry. But alas, we were not loud enough. Everyone held back their laughter as the one thing a Hadida is, is loud. We need to keep moving, said Felix. I'm going to try and pick up Bunny's trail. The rest of you follow Waku. We're headed into that field. Felix pointed with his paw at the field across the street. The traffic was quiet now as they ran across the road and Felix disappeared into the long grass through the very hole Bunny had gone through. Waku landed in front of the team. We're going to head across the field where Gruchil says we will find a second fence of a game farm. What's a game farm? asked Lily. Waku, having no idea, glanced at Grucho for some help. Uh. Grucho widened his eyes and bellowed. It's where they store savage animals from the wild. Everyone just stared at him in shock. We have to cross the game farm to get to the narrow river. And with that, Wham Wham fainted. Bunny was on a small hill on the other side of the field and could see the long wall of the game farm ahead of her. She wondered how she would get across when suddenly a fox appeared between her and the wall. Hello there, fairy little rabbit. What's your name? Bunny was terrified and wanted to run, but the fox was being polite. And Bunny was a very well-mannered little rabbit. My name is Bunny, she said. Well, that's original, the fox quipped, snickering to himself. You seem lost, far away from your home, and all alone, added the strange fox. Bunny slowly looked back, wondering what to do. It so happens I like bunnies, said the fox as he slowly walked towards her. Like bunnies how? asked the nervous bunny. Well, you're soft and very cute. You're also quite delicious, threatened the fox. Uh, what did you say your name was? Asked Bunny, trying to perhaps charm the fox. I didn't, he said, then relented. My name is Neo, but you can call me Steve. Uh, mumbled Bunny, as it made no sense. Uh, Steve, what are you planning to do here? I'm in quite a hurry. Steve the fox looked around and smiled. I was about to have dinner, then you arrived. Perfect timing, some might say. Bunny stomped her foot and strained her back legs, ready to dart away. The cunning fox leaned forward, ready to pounce. The moment intensified when suddenly there was a voice behind the bushes. There will be no drama here tonight, Stephen. It was Felix. He walked out calm as only a cat could be, and more confident than a bald eagle. Bunny was relieved to see him. Who are you? asked Steve the fox. What are you? My name is Felix. You can call me Killer. The fox strained his eyes, confused by the overconfident guest, Felix continued. And to answer your second question, uh, uh, I'm a cheetah. Cheetah? I thought cheetahs were big and dangerous. Asked the even more confused fox. Yes, indeed, you are right. You see, when I get upset, I, uh, I grow bigger and so do my teeth. I become very dangerous. Just ask my friend Bunny. Felix looked over at Bunny, as did Steve the fox. Bunny looked more confused than Steve, but played along and nodded as she added, Felix, uh, I mean killer, once fought a dragon and won. The fox gulped, looking slowly back at Felix nervously as the uh, cheetah sat and started grooming himself. 
Well, that sounds about right, I suppose. You're not upset now, are you? I mean, how are you feeling right now? Asked the now nervous fox. I'm feeling quite calm. Thank you for asking. Answered Felix. Good, good. Let's stay that way, shall we? Insisted the fox. Time for you to leave, fox. I'm starting to feel tense. Said Felix in a louder, more asserting voice. Hey, no problem. Just don't get upset, Mr. Cheetah. I'm leaving. And with that, the fox turned and darted away through the long grass. Bernie dropped back sitting as she panted in relief. Felix looked dizzy, as though he was going to faint from all the excitement, and lay down. Thanks, Felix. You saved me, whispered Bernie. No problem, Bonnie. You can always count on me, whispered the brave cat. I didn't know you were a cheetah, said Bonnie, not having any idea what a cheetah was. Felix looked at Bonnie with a humorous, startled look and smiled. Hey, you learn something new every day, kiddo. The moon moved out from behind the clouds and the field lit up with a pale blue light. We're safe for now, but you need to get some cover. Then, at first light, I'm taking you home, asserted Felix. Bunny leaned forward. No, I'm going to find my mama, Felix. I must see if she's still alive. A sad demeanor fell over Bunny. Felix noticed this and stared a moment, then looked around, wondering what to do. He finally stood up and walked up to her. Okay, Bonnie, I will help you find your mama. Bonnie's face lit up and she smiled from big bunny ear to big bunny ear. First things first, we need you to dig a hole under that fence. Then, at first light, we'll cross over into the game farm. He said looking at the wall, then at Bonnie. How's that sound? That sounds good. Thank you, Felix said Bonnie, still smiling. Let's go, said Felix as they sprinted to the wall to start the dig. Waku and the team had settled in for the night. Daisy and Lily were sleeping on a soft patch of grass and Wham Wham was sleeping in a small bush. Waku stared across the field wondering where Felix was and whether he had found Bonnie or not. Grucho was looking out over the field as well and turned to Waku. You're all going through an awful lot of trouble for that bunny, he said, trying not to scream. Well, she's our friend, replied Waku. Well, I hope she doesn't make it into the game farm. There are dangerous creatures there. Waku stared wide-eyed and raised both wings. Why did you tell her that way then? I'm not a travel agent, Waku. She asked and I told her. If something happens to her, then it's not my fault mumbled the big bird. Waku rolled his eyes and lay back to get some rest. Morning came and there was a fresh hole dug under the fence into the game farm. Bunny and Felix were already making their way across the farm. Waku arrived with Daisy, Lily and Grucho at the wall. They all saw the fresh hole and were sure Bunny must have dug it to get through. Wham Wham arrived Having been temporarily lost, Waku walked forward and peeped through the fence. Daisy stepped forward. What are we waiting for? Let's go already! No! cried Waku. It's too dangerous. This is no place for dogs. He glanced at Wham Wham. And you don't want to get lost in there. Grucho turned and pointed furiously with his wing, yelling. Wild creatures with big teeth! I tell you! I wouldn't go in there if my life depended on it. Anywho, Grucho and I are going in. Assured Waku. What? Yelled Grucho. The rest of you, wait here. But we can help, argued Lily. Waku leaned forward. We can't afford more than one rescue, Lily. Like I said, this is no place for two cute little dogs. Oh, thank you. You're so kind, whispered Daisy cutely. You're most welcome, <laughs> replied Waku. Tweet, wondered Wham Wham. Uh, no, Wham Wham, I, uh, 
I need you to stay here and... Uh, Boku winked at Daisy and Lily. And uh, protect the dogs. Hmm. Lily smiled as Wham Wham saluted with his wing and let out a confident... Tweet! Baku and a reluctant Grucho took flight and soared over the high fence to find Bunny and Felix and bring them home. Inside the game farm, Felix and Bunny were making good progress. They ran across the beautiful terrain. Well, it doesn't look that dangerous to me, Felix. She laughed. Felix slowed and looked around. It's not what you can see, Barney. It's what is hiding away and possibly stalking us uh, that worries me. Ha! Huh. mumbled Bunny, suddenly more aware of the many spots something could be hiding behind. Well, we've got that cheetah story of yours, so we can always use that if we run into trouble, laughed Bunny. What if we run into a cheetah? asked Felix as he squinted his eyes nervously. Bunny looked at him wide-eyed, and they both came to a stop. Oh, I'm sorry I pulled you into this, Felix. You're taking far too big a risk helping me. Bunny looked down, feeling bad. Felix assured her. I wouldn't have it any other way, Bunny. That's what friends are for. Bunny smiled, and they looked across the open plains, wondering where the narrow river could be. A rustle in the long grass startled them both. Felix stepped forward, staring intently as he muttered and then screamed. Bonnie, run! They both sprinted off as suddenly, out of the grass ran Steve the fox, followed by one of his fox friends, Rocco. Bunny hopped as fast as she could and looked back at Felix, who was close behind. Keep moving! Head for those rocks! screamed Felix. Bunny turned and hopped towards a large cluster of rocks. The foxes were determined and kept up the chase. As Bunny scampered over the rocks, she grinded to a halt as there were two more foxes waiting. It's an ambush! yelled Felix. As he slowed and turned facing the two foxes chasing him, Bunny and Felix were surrounded. Well, well, well. If it isn't Tasty Bunny and her friend the Cheetah, said Steve the Fox. Felix knew they had figured out his ruse and looked around trying to look as dangerous as he could. But there were only the two of them versus four foxes. My colleague Rocco over here has met a cheetah and you're not it, snickered Steve the fox. Felix, acting calm, asked Rocco facetiously. You've met a cheetah? Yes. It was terrifying. I had my first heart attack. Bunny stayed wide-eyed and confused. Okay, enough about the cheetahs, Rocco. Let's do this, yelled Steve. Felix, trying to buy time, asked politely. I'm so sorry, I don't even know your name. I'm Felix and this is Barney. Hi, I'm Rico, answered Rico. I'm Rocco, added Rocco. Hi, I'm Dave. Nice to meet you, Felix. Bunny and Felix smiled politely as Steve squinted his eyes and shouted, Hey, what are you doing? This isn't a meet and greet, Dave. It's a meet and eat. Come on, man. My bad, said Dave, waving sorry. Felix started snarling as the foxes slowly walked around them. Bunny was stomping her foot, warning them as Steve smiled and said, I'm going to enjoy this. He was about to leap when a stern voice interrupted him. Who goes there? It shocked everyone. They all looked up and on top of a big rock was a magnificent cheetah. Everyone froze. The foxes, the cat, the bunny. The cheetah stepped off the rock and slowly walked forward to the group. He stared with a menacing glare at the foxes and then at Bunny and Felix. You look like a relation of mine, just smaller, said the cheetah in a calm, scary voice. I think we might be distant cousins, sir, whispered Felix politely. Steve the fox leaned in 
and spluttered. Uh, Mr. Cheetah, I think I could be your nephew. Huh? What? The cheetah shouted back. Silence! Did I say you could talk? The foxes gulped. Everyone was trembling and Steve looked like he was going to faint. Rocco the fox leaned over wide-eyed and whispered, Dude, hold it together! The cheetah looked at Bunny and asked, What is a small bunny like you doing here in the wild? Bunny glanced at Felix, then back at the cheetah. Well, sir, I'm on an adventure to find my birth mama. She's over the narrow river at a farm that has a red silo with a yellow stripe. I have to see if she's still alive, mumbled Bunny respectfully. And I take it you're the troublemakers in this story, said the cheetah to the nervous foxes. Dave smiled nervously. Where? We're, we're just hungry for some lunch, Mr. Scary Cheetah, he said. So am I, said the cheetah. So am I, uh, spluttered Dave. Listen to me carefully. My cousin the cat and the cute little bunny are now under my protection. No harm is to come to them. Do you understand? The foxes all nodded profusely. The cheetah walked up to them, snarling as his large teeth threatened. You can go now. Don't let me see you again. Rocco was holding his heart as the foxes scampered away as fast as they could. The cheetah turned and sat back. He looked calmer now as he quietly assured Felix and Bunny. You don't need to worry. I mean you no harm. Besides, I had a big breakfast. And with that, he burst out laughing. <laughs> Felix and Bunny's eyes were wide open as they stared on, confused. It's a joke, people. You can laugh. Felix and Bunny roared with nervous but relieved laughter. The cheetah pointed and added. The narrow river you mentioned is that way. You're nearly there. But I must warn you, it's not that narrow. Felix and Bunny looked over in the direction of the river. The cheetah smiled, saying, Pleasant journey, cuz. And you, Bunny, I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you, uh, cuz. You were quite awesome today. Assured Felix, as the cheetah smiled with pride, knowing he was indeed awesome. Thank you, Mr. Cheetah, sir. I will never forget this, whispered Bunny. Go, go! Find your mama, cute Bunny, and don't fear. Word will get around about my protection over you two, and no one will bother you again. Assured the mighty Cheetah to his two new friends, and with that, Felix and Bunny headed off to the narrow river. What a sweet little Bunny! mumbled the satisfied cheetah. High up in the air, Waku and Grucho were flying and searching for Bunny and Felix. We need to ask some of the locals if they have seen them, called Waku to the startled Hadida. What? Are you mad? shouted Grucho. You don't ask locals for directions. You're not a tourist here, you silly bird. You're lunch and dinner, and in your case, an hors d'oeuvre blasted Grucho in his loud way. Waku rolled his eyes and undeterred, he dove down to stop a local. He landed on a rock and saw four funny looking dogs. They were of course Steve, Rocco, Rico and Dave, the four foxes from before. They saw Waku and were delighted at their lunch prospects. Here little birdie, here here, muttered Steve the fox. Attention, gentlemen, I require your help, asked Waku politely. You're going to die, you fool! shouted Grucho from the air. Waku dismissed his concern, as he believed that being polite would always garner the same response in return. What can we do for you, little bird? And come closer. I'm a bit hard of hearing, snickered Steve. Waku jumped down and walked forward between the foxes. That's very kind of you, sir. 
I'm looking for... Uh... Waku looked back slowly as Rico and Dave were sniffing him enthusiastically. He continued. Uh, uh, like I was saying, I'm looking for my friends. Yes? Snarled Steve, about to pounce as Waku concluded. Felix the cat and Bunny the bunny. Uh, what? Who did you say? Spluttered Steve as he realised who Waku was friends with. Uh, yes, certainly, Mr. Bird. Uh, I believe your friends went uh, that way. Stammered Steve as all the foxes looked nervously around for the cheetah again. Waku, having no idea what was going on, smiled. Thank you, fine sirs. I bid you all a good day. And with that, he flew off. The foxes all slumped down. We're having the worst day, quipped Dave. Up in the air, Waku joined Grucho and updated him. What friendly locals! Bunny is that way. I'm done. You're far too reckless for my nerves. He turned and flew back home. <coughs> eh? Waku was confused but pressed on alone. Bunny and Felix arrived at the narrow river. It was much wider than Grucho had said, as he had always seen it from the air, and it didn't seem that wide. Oh my gosh! exclaimed Bunny. That's not narrow. Felix walked up and looked over the rushing water. What are we going to do, Felix? asked Bunny. Felix was baffled as Bunny inquired. How good a swim are you? Well, on a scale of one to ten, I'd say a zero. <laughs> Cats and water, you see, are like a uh, worm worm and direction. Not good. Not good at all. So then what, Felix? Is this it? Is our adventure doomed? Mumbled Bonnie. Not necessarily, shouted a voice from above the trees, startling both Felix and Bunny. They looked up and saw a beautiful giraffe looking down from behind a tree. It must be scary for two little creatures like you, assured the kind giraffe walking out into the open. If you need a hand, I'd love to help. Felix stepped forward and politely replied. Thank you, uh, Mr... It's Miss, and you can call me Dez, answered the giraffe. Hop on board. I'll be your bridge across the river. Felix and Bunny stared in awe, as hopping on board would require a catapult. Thank you, uh, Miss Dez, said Bunny. How do we exactly hop on board? Felix, meanwhile, looked down at his claws, imagining the giraffe would not enjoy his climbing technique. Here we go! said the majestic giraffe as she split her front legs and knelt down low enough for them to hop on. Bunny hopped on first, adding, Thank you, Miss Dez. What a polite little bunny, said Dez the giraffe to Felix as he climbed on board. With Felix and Bunny secure on her back, Dez the giraffe gestured forward. There's a section of the river that I think will be safer to get you across. Hold on, it's not far. And with that, Dez the giraffe started galloping along the river. Felix and Bunny were wide-eyed and never imagined they would ever be riding a giraffe. The trip was not long, but Dez the giraffe entertained her guests as she ran, singing her Christmas song to the tune of Jingle Bells. I love to run, running's fun, I could run all day. There's a bunny on my back and a cat I'll call James Mayo. They arrived at the safer part of the river to cross. Dez the giraffe stepped into the water slowly as she called out to her passengers. Get ready to run over. I'm going to bridge the gap. She leaned her long neck over for Bunny and Felix to carefully walk across. They climbed over her head and jumped to the other side of the river. Dares the giraffe stepped out back onto the ground as Bunny waved, calling out. Thank you, Miss Dez. You're the kindest, most amazing animal I've ever seen. 
Well, I can't say I'm not hurt by that, said Felix the cat, as he was sure he was the kindest, most amazing animal Bunny had ever seen. Bye, Bunny. Bye, James May. So long. Oh, that was fun, said Dez the giraffe. Bunny and Felix waved to Dez and got on their way. They crossed a small patch of long grass onto a hill, and as they reached the top, they stopped. On the other side was the red silo with the yellow stripe. Both Bunny and Felix were silent. Bunny looked over at Felix with wonder and excitement in her eyes. Felix smiled as Bunny had reached the end of the adventure. All that was left was to find her mama. Just then, Waku landed in front of them and hugged Bunny, wrapping both his wings around her head. Oh, little Bunny, you're safe. You're safe. He then stepped back and awkwardly nodded his head to Felix, the scary cat. Felix? He muttered. Yes, hello, Waku, said Felix the cat. Bunny hopped up and down. Waku, Waku, look, it's the red silo with the yellow strap. That's where my mama lives. Yes, but let's stay calm, Bonnie, at least until we find her, replied Waku. May I suggest something here? Maybe Waku should go and check to see if your mama is indeed there. Bonnie looked sad as she wanted to go. We can't just wander onto the farm, Bonnie. We don't know if they have big angry dogs or foxes or even angry cheetahs. Exactly. Or possessive humans that want to keep us because we're just so darn adorable, said Felix. Waku looked at her. I'll do it, Bonnie. Let me go and see if your mama is there. Bonnie sat down, looking calm. Thank you, Waku. That'll be great. Up and away! Waku flew up and soared down to the farm, disappearing behind the red silo with the yellow stripe. Bunny and Felix stared a moment, then sat down. All we can do is sit back and wait, Bunny. Bunny pondered. Did you ever know your mama, Felix? Felix smiled. Ah, oh, yes, indeed. She was a beautiful cat. Everyone loved her. What was her name? Mama, answered Felix, causing Bunny to squint her eyes humorously. Oh, I see what you mean, yes. Well, they called her Gucci. I was the last of my siblings to be adopted, so I got to spend a wonderful amount of time with my mama. She loved me, and I loved her. Felix looked over at Bunny, who was crying. He looked stunned. I didn't know bunnies could cry. Neither did I, replied Bunny. Waku suddenly landed behind them. They turned and looked at him wide-eyed for an answer. He held up both wings and began. Okay, I met a cow named Rose, who didn't know quite what a bunny was, so she sent me to Petunia, the goose. She was not in a good mood and wanted to bite me, but a pig named Tulip. It must be related to Daisy and Lily. <laughs> Quipped Felix as he chuckled to himself. Waku strained and continued. Anyway, Tulip asked the chicken named Hyacinth if she knew a bunny and... Waku, tell me! Tell me, please! Cried Bunny. Waku smiled. And she did. No, a bunny. Then pointed past Bunny and smiled again. Bunny and Felix turned, and there on the hill with them was Bunny's mama. She slowly walked forward, staring at Bunny, who was frozen in awe. The beautiful Bunny mama smiled, reached out, and stroked Bunny's cheek. Bunny, my daughter. She said, Mama, replied Bunny. They grabbed and hugged each other. Felix had tears in his eyes and Waku was full-blown crying. Mama, Mama, it's you. I can't believe it. You're alive. Of course I am, my child. I hoped I would live long enough to see my children again. 
to see my only daughter, you, my little girl. Bunny's dream had come true. She was reunited with her mama. How did you get here? Where did you come from? asked her mama. A long way, mama. A very long way, replied Bunny. And what is your life like, baby? Are you happy? Bunny looked at Felix and Waku and smiled. Yes, I'm very happy. I've got my friends who are like my family and a whole garden for me to eat. Bunny's mama laughed out loud with joy. <laughs> oh. As her little one was so cute and so courageous, suddenly there was a commotion from the river. Barking could be heard. Wham Wham suddenly flew over them and crashed into a bush. Daisy and Lily appeared over the hill and ran up, delighted to see Bunny. Grucho landed as well. He leaned over to Waku and apologized. Sorry I deserted you, old friend. By the time I realized my error, I flew into the girls. Pointing at Daisy and Lily. And helped them to find you. Consider it water under the birdhouse, dear friend. What's important is that you're here now. Gus, this is my mama, she said. They couldn't believe it and all hugged Bunny's mama. Daisy jumped in. You won't believe what we went through. We saw crazy foxes. One of them was named Dave. She squinted her eyes humorously. A cheetah whose teeth were bigger than my leg. And the tallest horse I've ever seen, named Dez. Giggled Lily. They all laughed as Wham Wham found his way back and summed up the whole adventure. Tweet! After spending some time with her mama and introducing her to all her friends, Bunny knew it was time to leave. She hugged her mama goodbye. Goodbye, mama. I miss you already. Will I see you again, my little girl? Asked her mama. Well, if I can find a way, then... Said Bunny, as Felix added. You will find a way. We will help you. Bunny smiled and nodded at him in thanks. She hugged her mama one last time and the friends headed off down the hill. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, my sweet little girl. Bunny was happy as her adventure was a huge success. The animals had all grown closer as a result of the rescue mission and even Grucho, though still loud, seemed to be in a good mood. Are you ready, Bunny? Asked Felix. I am, Felix, replied Bunny. We're, We're ready, ready too, too, shouted Daisy and Lily. Tweet, tweet, asked Wham Wham. Waku replied. Where are we going, you ask? He looked over at all the friends and then at Bunny. He smiled as it was hers to call. We're going home! Yelled the cute Bunny. They all cheered and hugged each other, laughing and singing. They headed down the hill on their way back home. The adventure was over. The end. I hope you enjoyed listening to Bunny's big adventure. Who knows what Bunny and the gang will get up to in the future. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. See you soon, my pet familia. Ciao.